The 6 o'clock news starts right now. We have managed to hold on to our nice weekends despite a series of cold fronts so far this season, but that will change this weekend when the next front is expected to arrive. Katie Blake has details on when exactly that will hit and how cold it's actually going to get coming up in your weather authority forecast. They see it as defending the Alamo defenders, a group of protesters closing ranks today around the Cenotaph, a monument in Alamo Plaza bearing the names of those killed in the Battle of the Alamo. The monument is supposed to be relocated by a few hundred feet as part of a larger plan to redesign Alamo Plaza. But as protesters began what their leader said will be a 24 hour demonstration, they told our Garrett Berger they aren't ready to let that happen. This is the monument to our Alamo defenders. This is their only tombstone. Although it's empty, it's still their tombstone. A tombstone this group doesn't want to see moved. Not one inch. Not one inch. The names of the dead Alamo defenders on this cenotaph mean something to all of the protesters here today, but even more to some of them. Three of my ancestors are eternally me memorialized on this. They've shed their blood for Texas. They've shed their blood since they came here in 1835. The City Council and the Historic and Design Review Commission have okayed the relocation. But those assembled believe the monument, commissioned in 1936, 100 years after the Texas Revolution, belongs where it's at. And we don't trust the city of San Antonio as well to try to start disassembling this, break it and say, oops, we made a mistake. We don't have the money to put it back up. Brandon Burkhart, the president of This is Texas Freedom Force, which organized a demonstration, said protesters believe that at least at one point, the relocation process was supposed to begin overnight tonight, but that the date has since changed. And we'll defend our Alamo defenders. If they bring cranes out here, we're not scared of going to jail. We'll step in the way of it. We weren't able to confirm when the relocation is supposed to begin. But beyond trying to stop a relocation themselves, Burkhardt says they hope to get Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick's attention and get him to intervene. And hopefully he can step in and let the people vote. Because if the vote happens, the Texans are going to say don't move it. Not one inch. Garrett Berger, KSAT 12 News. A tragic situation. That's how the Bear County Sheriff is describing the death of an inmate. 61 year old Stephen Wayne Cole died at the Bear County Jail last night. He'd been in jail since Sunday. Sheriff Javier Salazar says the initial call that led to his arrest was for shoplifting, but Cole ended up being arrested for criminal trespassing. Salazar says they believe Cole died of natural causes. He also says Cole was in bad health and used drugs. In my honest opinion, this gentleman should not have been here uh, in the Bear County Jail to the tune of 60 to $66 a day um, on a low bond. Cole needed just $40 to bond out of jail. Salazar says he was in the process of being approved for a personal recognizance bond, which would not have required him to pay anything, but that approval did not come soon enough. The medical examiner will make the final determination for Cole's exact cause of death. A holiday family gathering coming to an end with a police officer getting hit in the head and the man officers say is responsible in jail. Today we now know that the man who was taken into custody could be facing multiple charges. Max Massey was on the scene of the arrest and spoke with police. This is 46 year old Abel Rivera. A young lady here said her boyfriend had molested her 19 year old daughter and she wanted the police here. This is the reason police responded here to the 2100 block of Harper's Ferry on the west side on Christmas morning. But the situation only escalated once police arrived. We go back to the kitchen, try and talk to him. Uh, he had already cut the left side of his uh, neck okay. when we came in there. And we saw the knife on the counter, so we grabbed the knife, put it away from him so he couldn't get it again. On the scene of the arrest, police told me that they tried to talk Rivera down, but he was too intoxicated. So eventually they just had to go in and try to apprehend him. In the process, a sergeant got hit in the face. Uh, his, left, his left ear is cut right now from being hit and then we we're able to put handcuffs on him and restrain him. Officers on the scene telling me that alcohol played a big factor and they have advice for any more celebrations this holiday season. I would say just stay calm and uh, watch your alcohol intake because that seems to be the majority of the problem. As for Rivera, he has been formally charged with assault of a peace officer causing bodily injury, a second degree felony. Records show he was also arrested on a charge of sexual assault contact, but that charge does not appear on his formal booking record. It is possible that charge could be filed against him at large with the Bear County District Attorney's Office. Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. 
San Antonio police trying to sort out exactly what happened on the city's southeast side after a man showed up at his neighbor's house with knife wounds. That man telling officers that he woke up in the 4300 block of Roland Avenue to see his wife with a knife. Officers say he suffered cuts to his arms and legs. He went to the neighbor's house to get help and we're told that he was taken to Bamsey and is expected to be OK. Officers are still investigating what led up to the attack and have not said what charges the woman might be facing. Meantime, San Antonio police also investigating after a car slammed into a home on the city's west side. Officers responded to the 1300 block of West Agarita Avenue early this morning. The driver lost control and ran off I-10 and drove right into the living room of this house. The house was being renovated, so no one was home at the time. The driver was not hurt, but police are investigating to see if alcohol was involved. The Bear County Sheriff's Office searching into the night for a man that they say ran off after getting pulled over by deputies. This happening around 930 near I-35 in Redmond Road. According to a sergeant, deputies attempted a traffic stop, but the man jumped out of his vehicle and made a run for it. Deputies called for some help to try to track the guy down. They even brought in some canine officers, but no luck. Deputies eventually had to call off the search. Time saver traffic now. Let's take a live look at the roads out there. Highway 281 and Loop 410. The interchange here as you head westbound on 410. No six o'clock commute to talk about this evening. A lot of people probably still enjoying some time off with friends and family for the holidays. So things moving smoothly out there. Have you used the KSAT app lately or tried to? Maybe the stories you were looking for weren't there or what you wanted to watch live. You couldn't find it. Yeah, me too. And I work here. Luckily, my desk is right next to this guy, Colton. He's got a big title. Basically means he's in charge of everything online. So I asked, what's the deal? Our web team wizards did some investigating and found a quick and easy solution. Turns out when we recently updated our website, ksad.com, you might have noticed we made it a whole lot cleaner, sleeker looking. It's a lot faster too, making it easy for you to find exactly what you want when you come to ksad.com. Well, that update means that your KSAT news app has to be up to date too. My web buddy Colton showed me how to fix my phone, so now we want to make sure you know that easy steps for a fix too. If you have an iPhone, open the app store, then click your profile icon there in the top right hand corner. Might be your initials, maybe a photo. This one's a selfie from when I went to the Hoover Dam. I loved that trip. Scroll down to see pending updates. Tap update next to the KSAT News app or update all. Android users, we've got you too. You're going to want to open the Google Play Store. Click the menu button, those three horizontal bars in the top left. Then click My Apps. Find the KSAT News app and click Update. If these steps don't seem to work, just delete the app altogether and then re-download it. We have all of these solutions lined out on our website. You can find them right there at KSAT.com. And happy scrolling. Something else that is key to point out, I learned from my web buddy Colton, your operating system on your phone has to be up to date. Ah. Got that little red dot telling you, hey, click update. Got to go ahead and do that one I as well. I am guilty of that. Thank you for letting us know. <laughs> we'll be updating. <laughs> I'm here to help, Devin. <laughs> <laughs> we have found on the new KSAT weather app that some folks have been having issues getting multiple alerts at a time. Similar solution. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Update it or delete it and re-download. So kind of uniform solution there for you. Good to uh, know. We've got, yeah, a cold front coming through the forecast of this weekend. It's not going to really bring in a whole lot of cold air, but it does set us up for a nice day on Sunday. It does look like better chances, though, by New Year's Day next week. We'll talk all about it. Checking on the aquifer down just one-tenth of a foot today, and this is a brutal pollen count. Not only is mountain cedar still high, now mold is also high today with a count of a little over 1,800, so not good for uh, allergy sufferers today. Uh, I do think that we could see mountain cedar dry a little bit tomorrow, but it's been staying pretty elevated. We'll talk about your full weekend forecast and get you a sneak peek of your New Year's Eve forecast coming up. He is almost like a walking history of what happened in our treatment era. How one man is shattering expectations as he lives with diabetes. His story next at six. But first, news around Texas, an inmate who escaped from an East 
Texas jail is back behind bars. According to the Gregg County Sheriff's Office, 34 year old Jace Martin Laws was able to make it out by carving through a brick wall yesterday. Laws had been sentenced to 70 years in prison for two counts of assault on a police officer. Well, jail officials shut down the jail after the escape and the manhunt began. Earlier today, the sheriff's office posting on Facebook that Laws had been located and was back in custody. No other details were given. And no Christmas break for Border Patrol agents working in South Texas. On Monday, Rio Grande City officers responded to a call of a pickup truck loaded down with marijuana. When the smugglers saw officers, they say he sped off. During the pursuit, we're told he hit a Border Patrol unit while trying to get away. He eventually ditched the truck and, and the drugs and then ran off. That was more than $350,000 worth of marijuana. The officer behind the wheel of the vehicle was that, was, that was hit rather was not seriously hurt. On Christmas Eve, Border Patrol agents spotted an SUV carrying marijuana. State troopers tried to pull them over, but the driver kept going. The people in the SUV jumped out in the middle of a cane field, but they didn't get far. Three people were arrested and almost 150 pounds of pot were confiscated. And then yesterday, south of Garciasville, officers say they saw half a dozen people carrying bundles of marijuana across the river. Agents moved in, four people were arrested, but two were able to get away without the drugs. Almost $200,000 worth. This SA Salute holiday greeting is brought to you by CPS Energy. Hello, San Antonio. Christina Carter here with CPS Energy, sending a very special salute to our son, Kiwan Edmund, that is serving in Japan this holiday season. From the family here in San Antonio, Texas, and our CPS Energy family, we wish you a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year, and we appreciate all your hard work and service to our country. Healthcare fraud, bribery, and kickbacks. Tonight on the Night Beat, allegations made in an indictment against the owner of a local clinic and his COO. We have that story tonight at 10. And the legal fight continues as the Trump administration moves forward with building the new border wall. Tonight on the Night Beat, the move property owners are making that could cause a delay. There are more than a million people who have type 1 diabetes, and they can expect to live at least 10 years fewer than Americans without the disease. In fact, there were only 90 diabetics who have ever lived more than 70 years. But there's a man who crushed that goal 15 years ago and is telling others how they can do it too. 85-year-old Don Ray can't remember a life without diabetes. As a child, Don could not go to gym class. He couldn't play sports. He couldn't even play hide-and-seek. Because if you were to hide and they can't find you and you have an insulin reaction or a hypoglycemia, you might really be in trouble because they will never find you. He was told he wouldn't live past his 30s, but eventually he got tired of hearing, you can't, you can't, you can't. I would go to gym class when I started school, kindergarten, first grade, and I'd sit in the chair in gym class and I'd watch these kids, and I knew I could do this because I just knew I could do this. So Don and his dad started playing catch, and that turned into 20 years of playing football and 30 years of baseball. And he did it because he followed the rules. So what rules? First, make sure your blood sugar is in check between 80 and 130 milligrams. If it's too low, eat some carbs, but don't forget to check while working out. If they are going to exercise for an hour, they have to check it in 30 minutes again to make sure they are still in the safe zone. Don't take too much insulin before your meal or before your workout. So if you are going to exercise after lunch, for lunch, you take less insulin so that it's safer for you. And if you're working out after dinner, be careful as well. You don't want any overnight complications. If you take care of the disease, disease will take care of you. I don't believe that there's nothing a diabetic diabetic person can not do. There are nearly 140,000 people diagnosed with type 1 diabetes each year in the U.S. alone, but in 30 years, an ex expected 5 million Americans will be diagnosed with type 1. As for Don, he retired at the age of 70, but he still works as a Santa Claus during the holidays. 
So he's coming off his busy season. I love that. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. All right, it's uh, dropped down a little bit to 68 degrees. Earlier it was in the 70s, but we're still pretty good. A warm afternoon, yeah. yeah. A bit more sun today. That helped us to warm up a few more degrees as compared to yesterday. And you'll see a cold front in the forecast for this weekend. No, it's not really going to get too cold behind that front. What it will do for us, though, is clear out the clouds and humidity by the time we get to Sunday. Unfortunately, it's not going to help us out a whole lot with rain chances, and our ground is still very, very dry. Dry. Uh, here's the drought monitor from last week. This is updated each Thursday. And as I progressed to this week, really there was no change in the immediate San Antonio area. A little improvement down by the coast near Corpus. Otherwise, not a whole lot of change. So at least things haven't gotten too much worse. But we've still got some really dry earth out there. Rain uh, would be very beneficial. Tomorrow's front will only bring us a 20 to 30 percent chance of an isolated shower or storm. Most of us are going to miss out. I'm not very impressed with our rain chances tomorrow. I am a bit more hopeful, though, as we look forward to next week, specifically the first day of 2020 New Year's Day on Wednesday. A scattering of showers in the forecast. We'll talk more about that this morning. Things did start off pretty cloudy drizzly foggy. Here's our time lapse shot from 7 o'clock this morning. We did have some very brief fog, but it cleared up pretty quickly. And then we might have been able to see a good amount of blue sky this afternoon to warm us up to 74 after a morning low of 59. That's trending more than 10 degrees above average this time of year. So an unseasonably warm December day for us here. And we've still got some folks in the low 70s at this hour. 70 in Carrizo Springs, 72 in Eagle Pass, low to mid 60s elsewhere across South Texas. Uh, we have our dew point temperatures in the 60s and 50s now upper 50s for most of us so it was feeling pretty humid out there as we progress through the next several hours overnight our air temperatures will drop down to the low 60s upper 50s and that means we're looking at the potential for some more patchy fog very late tonight through early tomorrow morning. So a lot of clouds though streaming in uh, from the southwest. Uh, we've got cloudy skies across much of South Texas, also into North and West Texas. If you were with us yesterday, we were watching a low pressure system spinning over Southern California over the past 24 hours. That has made some good progress off to the east and is getting closer to West Texas at this hour. Uh, and we did have a tornado warning there that was coming out of uh, far eastern New Mexico into far west Texas that has since expired and I was going to show you that uh, because the much more active weather the potential for some strong to severe storms with this system is going to be closer to the center of this surface low that's sitting in southern Colorado about to come off of the Rocky Mountains into the Great Plains. So as we progress into late tonight, early tomorrow, uh, center of the surface low is going to actually take a quick jog off to the north. So that's going to take the potential for any strong to severe storms away from us here in South Texas. We are way on the south end of things, which means we don't have enough lift, enough energy to really get a good uh, scattering of rain going. So unfortunately, our rain chances tomorrow afternoon, late tomorrow afternoon and early in the evening as this front is coming through are really Really low, just some isolated showers, maybe a rumble of thunder possible if we can clear out tomorrow afternoon and see some sun. Uh, biggest thing though with this front, it clears us out beautifully. Even by Sunday morning, we'll be seeing a lot of sunshine. But here's how your day looks tomorrow. Patchy fog and drizzle to start. Part, partly to mostly cloudy skies, excuse me, through the afternoon hours. Best chance of rain tomorrow will be between about 3 and 5 p.m. as the front is moving through San Antonio. By tomorrow evening, we start to clear things out. Rain chances drop out of the forecast, and Sunday will be beautiful. Another really nice day on Monday, and then we get to New Year's Eve Tuesday. Increasing clouds, but for fireworks, we should be rain-free Tuesday night. However, that will change by Wednesday, the first day of the new year. Looks like we have a good chance at some showers, and that chance of rain will carry over into Thursday. Thursday, and that is definitely welcome news. Yeah, not a crystal clear weekend, but not bad. No, all in all. Mm. Sunday, the better if you want to get outside, finish up the, the holiday weekend. Sunday is your day. All right, thanks, Katie. Mm -hmm. All right, Greg. So, New Year's Eve means parties, fun, and football, and we know the Longhorns are getting ready for that Alamo. Well, Bowl. Utah's already in town. The yeah. Longhorns are arriving today to get ready for the Valero Alamo Bowl in 2019 to ring in 2020. When we come back, you'll hear from the Horns and their head coach in his third straight bowl appearance, and the Utah head coach spent his off day taming the steel eel. Let's see where we're coming up. This was a reception given to Texas Longhorns when they arrived at their downtown hotel headquarters this afternoon that overlooks the Alamo for their fourth appearance in the Valero Alamo Bowl. Head coach Tom Herman now in his third season in Austin, his third bowl appearance for the Longhorns, having wins in both the Texas and Sugar Bowls, now trying to end his 7-5 and five regular season finish on a high note. Excited to be 
uh, here in San Antonio uh, at the Alamo Bowl. Um, it'll be a great experience for, for our players and um, uh, I, I know having, uh, I've never coached in one of these, but I, I have heard and talked to a lot of colleagues that said uh, this is as, as good as it gets when it comes to bowl games. So excited to be here. The Longhorns will be led on defense by San Antonio's own Caden Stearns out of Steel High School, who, remember, was a defensive freshman of the year for the Big 12 last season. And on offense, Devin Duvernay, who leads the country in receptions per game and total receptions at 103. And then there's Sam Ellinger, who threw for 3,462 yards, 29 touchdowns, which is tied for second most in school history. And one of the big men up front blocking for Sam will be Reagan High School grad Derek Kerstetter. Just being home for me is really exciting and just I've played this, I've seen this game since I was little so it's exciting to finally get a play in it and just as far as how we've been practicing, we've been practicing to win the game and just do the best we can so yeah, we've had some good practices. I'm excited about what we're going to show on a Tuesday night or New Year's Eve. All right, the Longhorns' first practice will be tomorrow at 10.30 in the morning here in San Antonio. Utah's practice is closed to the media today. Now that Graham Harrell has decided to re-up as the USC Trojans offensive coordinator, the job is still open for the University of Texas. As they head into the Valero Alamo Bowl, Tim Beck, who is relieved of his duties as offensive coordinator following the final regular season game, is still with UT, this team, this week as the Longhorns' quarterback's coach. The name being mentioned now by several reports, including Stadium, is Ohio State passing coordinator Mike Yersich. This is how Utah head coach Kyle Whittingham spent his day at SeaWorld on Thursday, riding the steel eel, and then finding out today he's been named the winner of the Dodd Trophy for Coach of the Year for Utes' success on and off the field. And that's after he won the Pac-12 Coach of the Year after leading the Utes to an 11-2 record. Here's the matchup on New Year's Eve. It'll be Utah against Texas, Tuesday night in the Alamo Dome at 6.30. And the Titan Texas Aggies taking on Oklahoma State and the Academy Sports and Outdoors. Texas Bowl are already down late in the first quarter, 14 to nothing, looking for a comeback now. Former Longhorns head coach Mac Brown led North Carolina to a dominant military bowl win, 55 to 13 over Temple. Quarterback Sam Howell threw for three touchdowns, helping the Tar Heels finish 7 to 6 in their first season under Brown, who got a Gatorade bath after the game. It's the 14th bowl win and Brown's illustrious career. And Eastern Mission quarterback Mike Glass III was not around to see the end of his game against Pitt when he took exception to what someone said and started punching. You get a punch, you get a punch, you get a punch too, including one of the officials. He was ejected in the 34-30 loss. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. An update now, the Cowboys young linebacker Leighton Vander Esch, after just a few days removed from being told he was done for the season, the Wolf will undergo surgery in January to repair a bulging disc in his neck that he picked up against the Eagles in their first meeting in Arlington back on October the 20th. He would get back on the field for the next two games with symptoms return. He has been out for the last two months. Cowboys owner Jerry Jones is not one who is worried, saying he will make a full recovery with him nothing but the best, but he will not be involved in any more games this season. Sounds painful. Painful enough. Huh? It is. Thank you, Greg. Well, still to come at six, a Houston man looking for a couple of mystery men who helped save his dog near a busy freeway. What they did to get her out of a dangerous situation. And how the New York City Police Department is getting ready for any possible threats during this year's New Year's Eve celebrations. Next. The NYPD announcing some of the security measures in place for this year's New Year's Eve celebrations in Times Square. It comes amid warnings from federal authorities that large gatherings continue to be attractive targets to those who want to carry out violent attacks. Here's ABC's Michelle Franzen with the details. Three, two, one. As revelers prepare to ring in the new year around the world, in New York, the NYPD is reminding everyone to remain vigilant. I could tell you that we currently have no specific credible threats directed toward any of our events. Still, I'm going to ask that members of the public, as always, remain vigilant. In late November, federal agencies issued a joint bulletin warning that holiday events and large gatherings, such as the Thanksgiving Day Parade last month or next week's celebrations in Times Square, remain attractive targets for violent extremists. Nobody secures large-scale events better than the NYPD. Our men and women in blue will be out in full force protecting the ball drop in Times Square and the numerous other celebrations throughout the city. 2019 has been marked by several high profile attacks, including the shootings at a Walmart in El Paso, Texas, that left 23 dead and the recent mass shooting at Pensacola Naval Air Station in Florida, where three people were killed and eight others injured. 
The gun used in Pensacola was purchased legally, even though the shooter was a Saudi national. In a new report, the FBI warned would-be terrorists, including non-U.S. citizens, could use the hunting license loophole to purchase a gun. The Federal Highway Administration's issued a security advisory earlier this month warning of a possible shift in ISIS propaganda that suggests would-be lone wolf attackers move away from vehicle attacks and instead carry out smaller-scale attacks near highways, which could make for an easier escape by the assailant. However, the agency did caution it is not aware of any specific attacks against highway infrastructure or adjacent rest stops. Michelle Franz and ABC News, New York. News around Texas, the city of Dallas dismissing from a lawsuit over the shooting death of Botham Jean by a former police officer. In October, Amber Geiger was convicted of murder and sentenced to 10 years in prison. Botham Jean's parents filed suit against the city and Geiger, but according to court papers, a judge has dismissed their claims against the city of Dallas. The only defendant left in the lawsuit is Geiger. A young woman in Austin trying to save her dog ended up needing to be rescued herself after she fell off of a cliff. The cliff is near Pennybacker Bridge, a popular area for hikers looking for a bird's eye view of the Capitol. The 18 year old was walking her dog when it took off running and she went after it. She fell and slid into trees near the water. It's not atypical for us to see stuff like this. The trails are narrow, uh, the rocks are slippery. It scares me because I climb up there all the time and I've never considered that you have to like be a little more careful when you're up there. EMS and fire officials reached her near the bottom of the cliff and lowered her to a rescue boat. She was then airlifted to a hospital. A Houston area man looking to thank two men who rescued his dog after it was trapped near a busy freeway. Only he doesn't know who they are, where they are, or where they were going. Eight-year-old Suki is home and happy now, but there was a lot of worry after her owner says she ran off through an open gate a few days ago. Well, that sparked a frantic search, including online posts, flyers, walking the neighborhood, and even robocalls. Finally, four days later, the phone rang. I was like, oh my gosh, we have your dog, and I was so excited. Found here just a few feet under the freeway at the 527 Spur. The rescue involved a can of food, a ladder, patients, and a lot of people who cared. The two mystery men leaped into action, taking the food up the ladder to get Suki. Now, it took a couple of hours, but they did it, and they were gone. Who I want to thank wherever you are. They said they had to get to the airport. I don't know anything about what happened to them. They're just two men that I really have to thank. Avram, the man you heard from, is hoping that someone who sees this picture will be able to help identify the men so that he can thank them in person. I bet it's going to happen. <laughs> if you thought you saw some long lines at UPS or the post office this month, you may want to steer clear on January 2nd. Why one shipping company says it expects its busiest shipping day ever still to come. And a movement that began in the United Kingdom is looking to get people to start the new year off alcohol free. We'll tell you more about it next at six. A lot of people looking to get Target to stop using plastic bags for good. Almost 460,000 people have signed a petition at change.org. The petition says getting rid of plastic bags won't be convenient to us, but it's time to act. Target says it's been working for solutions that are environmentally friendly. They say that includes making plastic bags that are partly made from recycled materials. The year 2020, it's just days away, and the advertisements for New Year, New You are everywhere. But what if you made just one small change to start the year off healthy? Stephen Cavasso says more. Did you enjoy the holidays a little too much and are looking for a way to do a reset? Well, dry January might be the thing for you. The challenge started in the United Kingdom in 2013 and encourages people to give up alcohol from New Year's Day to February 1st. Sponsored by Alcohol Change UK, dry January is a way to reset your drinking habits and it could help curb excessive drinking for more than just one month. From a medical standpoint, this can only be a positive thing. Numerous studies have found that no amount of alcohol is good for your overall health. 
According to research published in the journal The Lancet, any benefits are offset by the increased risks of cancer and other diseases. Giving up booze for a while can have more immediate benefits as well, like saving money by not buying those expensive drinks at the bar. Plus, you'll automatically be cutting calories. And since alcohol is known to slow down your metabolism, that could rev back up too. So give it a try. If you hate it, you can always grab a beer on February 2nd. Stephen Cavazos, KSAT 12 News. Look outside with live cam. Nearly 70 degrees out there. Overall, beautiful day, but warm, Katie. Definitely warm. Uh, over 10 degrees above average, our high temperature today. Uh, average high this time of year is in the low to mid 60s. We were up to 74 this afternoon after a morning low of 59 record for today. 82 degrees. At least didn't get that warm out there. Uh, overnight, we'll see temperatures fall only to the upper 50s, low 60s. Skies staying cloudy, patchy fog and drizzle developing overnight through early on Saturday. We've got a front coming through tomorrow. Not going to bring us too much rough weather, but it is going to get pretty bumpy well off to our north and through the central and northern plains. The next couple of days, we'll take a look at the storm system that's going to bring that bumpy weather and what it means for our forecast here at home. Coming up in just a few minutes. Just four days until New Year's Eve. That means crews are working around the clock in New York to get the celebration ready. This morning, 192 sparkling new Waterford Crystal Triangles were installed on the Times Square Ball. This year's design is called Gift of Goodwill. Organizers say that the pineapple cuts are supposed to signify the image of hospitality and goodwill. An estimated 1 million people will watch the ball drop from the streets of Times Square. 1 billion people will watch around the world. I'll be with them watching at home. <laughs> I won't watch those. <laughs> Tesla's electric truck rival Rivian hoping to steal the buzz from the electric car maker with a new video showing its vehicle doing full 360 turns from a standstill. The company calls it the quad motor tank tank turn and says the high tech feature will be available on both its R1T and R1S models. Rivian expects its truck to go on sale in late 2020. According to Business Insider, the electric vehicle company has gained the financial backing of Amazon, Ford and Cox Automotive, among others. And it's the most anticipated electric vehicle brand since Tesla. The price tag starts at $69,000. That at least looks a little more like a truck. Yeah, compared to Tesla's version. I like it. Very space agey, in my <laughs> opinion. Shipping companies have had a busy holiday season, but they aren't in the clear just yet. They're bracing for millions of people to return all those gifts they didn't like. January 2nd could be the biggest day ever for holiday gift returns. Several shipping companies have dubbed it National Returns Day. UPS expects a record 1.9 million packages to be returned next Thursday. Ooh. That's a lot. And that's 26% up from one year earlier and that's just for UPS. It doesn't include packages sent through the Postal Service or FedEx. UPS expects the record numbers because January 2nd is the first work day of the new year. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> Makes sense. People run an errand. Yep. One of what was once the brightest stars in the sky is causing some scientists to scratch their heads. The red giant star called Betelgeuse <laughs> Not to be confused with the other guy we all know, has been rapidly dimming since October. Now, this used to be the ninth brightest object you could see from Earth, but it's now more than two times fainter than it usually is. Scientists think it may now be about to blow, turning into a so-called supernova. Now, when that is going to happen is anyone's guess. Some scientists believe that it could still be more than 200,000 years away. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so don't hold your breath. Yeah, right? Whenever it does happen, though, it will be a spectacular show in the sky, but they say it won't pose any danger to life here on Earth. But, again, it may not blow up at all. Some scientists believe that the dimming is just a phase and there is no supernova in the making. Okay. <laughs> so... I would say we'll wait and see, but we won't. Yeah. <laughs> if there are any fruitcake lovers left out there, today is your day. It is National Fruitcake Day. For those who may not know, fruitcakes used to be a big deal during the holidays. They're made with nuts and dried fruit, and they date. Get it? They date all the way back. Ah. Oh, hey -o to okay. ancient Rome. <laughs> Nowadays, fruitcakes often include chopped candies. Sometimes they're soaked in brandy or another liquor. They're a traditional gift at this time of year. And they're also a popular <laughs> gift to give yeah. back to someone else. Like, yeah. yeah, that's what I usually do with them. Man. Not my favorite. Do you guys eat it? 
my grandmother used to make them when I was growing up, and I appreciated all the hard work and effort, but I just, they weren't, I don't like them. I don't think, I, nobody in my family ever made them, really. Hmm. But when I've seen them, they don't, <laughs> they don't look like they'd be for Yeah, me. that green candy in there is what throws them <laughs> off, I think. Yeah. I don't know. What about you, Katie? I had one, um, and it just, no. Yeah, her face kind of <laughs> says it all. Said it all. Yeah. yeah. Maybe I had the wrong kind. It was store-bought, not homemade, not made with love. So maybe that was the, mm -hmm. uh, maybe that was the difference. That must be the key. <laughs> we all like the weather, though, today. Yeah, I haven't, a few folks are like, you know, it's, it's too warm. The biggest complaint that we've gotten is the allergens, mm -hmm. the, uh, the mold yeah. and the mountain cedar. I'm sorry about that. Uh, yeah, humidity was a bit higher yesterday. We really didn't expect the mold count to jump as high as it did today, but yeah, mold and mountain cedar uh, are high. We've got a front coming through over the weekend. Uh, it's not going to bring in a whole lot of colder air, but uh, wh what it will do is clear out the higher humidity that we've had in place the past couple of days. Right now, we've got folks in the low 70s, mid to upper 60s across South Texas, and there's a lot of warmth across the southern part of the country. Of course, Florida, nice and warm, 70 degrees in Orlando. We're not too far removed from them right now. 64 in Atlanta, 63 in Memphis. So a lot of green stretching up through Texas over to the Mississippi River, even up through portions of Tennessee and Kentucky. They're the colder air off to the north. They're in the 30s in Chicago, 29 in Denver right now. Teens up in the, up in the northern plains. And we've got a frontal boundary here that's kind of separating that colder air from the warmth across the southern part of the country and here in Texas. A lot of commotion starting to fire up here. Coming off of the Rockies, this low pressure system uh, will drag a cold front through uh, Texas during the day tomorrow. But this low is actually going to take a jog off to the northeast tomorrow into Sunday. These are big travel days as people are heading home after the Christmas holidays. We've got some dense fog up in the Texas panhandle tonight into western Oklahoma and Kansas as well. But winter storm warnings, winter weather advisories stretch through the central and northern portion of the plains all the way up to the U.S.-Canada border. So you can kind of see the path that the slow pressure system is going to take over the next couple of days. It will move off to the northeast. And what that means for us, we're going to be on the southern end of things, the southern end of the good rain-making energy. But that does mean we're not going to be concerned about any strong to severe thunderstorms. So while we would like a little bit more rain, not going to be concerned about any strong to severe storms tomorrow. That will be up in far north Texas, then into portions of Oklahoma and the central plains. Here at home, again, on the tail end of the energy here, so just some isolated showers and maybe a few rumbles of thunder tomorrow afternoon and evening. Depending on how much we can get the cloud cover to break up tomorrow, if we see a little bit more sun, warm up a little bit more, atmosphere gets a little bit more juiced up. Maybe a few rumbles of thunder, mainly north of San Antonio, late in the afternoon, early in the evening as this frontal boundary is moving through. Through. Once the front gets through tomorrow evening, things will start to clear out and by early on Sunday morning, skies will be clear. Sunday will end up being a breezy and cooler day. So high temperatures tomorrow back in the low 70s will be in the 60s on Sunday. So if you've got any outdoor plans you want to do, Sunday would probably be the better day. It'll still be pretty humid tomorrow and a little bit on the warmer side. Jumping ahead to your New Year's Eve sneak peek forecast here. Uh, we're starting to get a better idea of how New Year's Eve and New Year's Day will play out. It looks like Cloud cover will come pouring back in during the day Tuesday, so could be overcast for fireworks Tuesday night, but it does look like the rain will hold off until Wednesday. We'll pick up a 60% chance of some scattered showers on Wednesday, and here's the setup as we head into our next holiday. The system that comes through this weekend by early next week, way off to the northeast, it's moving out, and then we've got another low moving in from the west coast New Year's Eve into New Year's Day on Wednesday. How fast this low progresses to the east will kind of determine how quickly we can clear out once we get past Wednesday into next Thursday, but it does look like this will help to provide some lift, bring in the cloud cover on Tuesday, and then chances of scattered showers as we get into the first day of 2020 on Wednesday. 60% chance of rain Wednesday will hold on to a 40% chance of showers as we get into to Thursday, and that's actually not a bad way to start the new year. We still have a lot of ground to make up when it comes to rain. It was a very dry second half of uh, 2019, so rain chances are most welcome, and at least they're going to hold off until after the fireworks. All right. Okay, thanks, Katie. Mm -hmm. In case you missed it, it's coming up next. Here's today's In Case You Missed It.
It is Friday, December 27th, and we begin this noon with an investigation at the Bear County Jail after authorities confirmed to us that an inmate died in his cell overnight. It happened just before 11 last night. During a routine check, a deputy found 61-year-old Stephen Wayne Cole unresponsive. Deputies and medical staff tried helping him, but he was pronounced dead about 30 minutes later. The medical examiner will have the final say on how exactly he died, but BCSO tells us Cole had a medical condition and used drugs. Cole was arrested just this past Sunday. Officials are looking into his death. New details this noon on the death of a pregnant mother on Christmas Day. San Antonio police have charged the father of her children with capital murder. Her name was Gabriela Rodriguez. Police say he shot and killed her and her unborn child while dropping off her two children. He then turned the gun on himself. He's currently at University Hospital with life-threatening injuries. So far, no word on whether more charges are possible. A plane crash in Kazakhstan has claimed the lives of at least a dozen people after it crashed right after takeoff. The plane crashed just a minute after takeoff with 100 people on board. The Interior Ministry saying at least 12 people are confirmed killed, the captain among the dead. As 2019 comes to an end, workers starting to prepare the Times Square ball for its annual drop. Workers now have the daunting task of installing 2,688 Waterford crystals on the famous sphere. About a million revelers expected to crowd into Times Square to watch the ball drop and ring in 2020 come next Tuesday night into Wednesday morning. Warm, mostly cloudy and humid tomorrow. Low chance of a shower in the afternoon, early evening. Beautiful Sunday and Monday. Increasing clouds New Year's Eve and rain chances by the first day of 2020. Not a bad way to ring it in. No, not at all. We need it. <laughs> sure. Katie. Thanks for watching the news at six. We'll see you back here for the night beat. And don't forget the news at nine online.